assuming there's not a market failure such as a monopoly or an externality, we assume that competitive markets are going to produce an efficient outcome. The economy is going to be efficient. But what do we mean when we say efficient or efficiency? Well, there's three types of efficiency that we can think about in terms of the economy. There's efficiency in consumption, efficiency in production, and product mix efficiency. All three of these types of efficiency are essential to have Pareto efficiency. And with Pareto efficiency, what we're basically saying is when we're at an allocation that is Pareto efficient, there's no way we could make somebody in the economy better off without making at least one person worse off. But let's get back to our three types of efficiency. I want to start by discussing the efficiency in consumption, which you'll sometimes see referred to as exchange efficiency. So exchange efficiency just means that the goods that are produced in the economy end up in the hands of the people who value them the most. So let's say, for example, that I really like cookies. So here's me. I really like cookies. And you, you really like cake. So let's say there's, there's one cake and then there's one plate of cookies in our economy and those, those are the only goods. You should get the cake and I should get the cookies, right? Now, if it started out where I actually had the cake and then you had the cookies, we would just trade, right? So we would trade to the point where we get to where we have an efficient outcome, an outcome that's efficient in consumption. Because I value cookies more and you value cake more, we would just make a trade. So when we are at an allocation that is efficient in consumption, at that point, there is no further scope for mutually beneficial trades because they've all been exhausted. We've already made the trades. So when we're at the point where I have the plate of cookies and you have the cake, we'd say that we are efficient in consumption. The economy is efficient in consumption. The people who value the cookies and value the cake the most are the people who have them. Now, efficiency in production has to do with basically when you're at a point at an allocation that is efficient in production, you cannot produce any more of one good without producing less of another good. So let's say that we had an economy with ice cream cones and then we had slices of pizza. So let's just think about those two specific types of goods and let's say that if we just completely focused on producing ice cream cones, we'd produce 200 ice cream cones and zero slices of pizza. Now, if we just focused on slices of pizza, we'd have 100 slices of pizza and zero ice cream cones. So any point, so this is called the production possibilities frontier, this, this line right here, this, this slope. So that curve, now any point along this curve is going to be efficient in production. But I just want to focus on one point. Let's, let's do an easy example. Let's say we're producing right here where there's 200 ice cream cones are produced and then there's zero slices of pizza. So if that's the case, if we wanted to produce one slice of pizza or two slices of pizza, whatever, we want to increase from zero, we want to increase and produce an additional slice of pizza, go from zero to one, we're going to have to decrease the amount of ice cream cones. We cannot, at this point right here, we cannot produce any more, and any, any more than zero slices of pizza if without going from 200 to let's say 198 ice cream cones. We have to decrease the number of ice cream cones at this point to be able to get some more slices of pizza. So this point, this point here, along with all the points along the curve, are per efficient in production because at all those points, you couldn't get any more of one good without decreasing the amount of the other good. So that's efficient in production. Now, product mix efficiency, is, which is also called allocative efficiency, has to do with people's preferences in the economy. So basically, the goods that are going to be produced are going to go to the people who actually want or, or, or need them. But it, it's different than efficiency and consumption. It, I know it sounds similar, but, but let me give you an example of how it's different. So let's say we have an economy where we produce left shoes and right shoes, right? So if the economy just focused specifically on left shoes and produced no right shoes at all, just zero, then we would have 
50 left shoes and zero right shoes. Conversely, if we just focused on right shoes, we'd have 50 right shoes and zero left shoes. Okay, let's just say that that's the way the economy is. Now, it would be efficient in production. Now, I'm not talking about allocative efficiency here. I'm talking back when we talked about efficiency in production, right? It would be efficient in production to produce 50 left shoes and zero right shoes. Why? Because at that point, we could not increase any more. Uh, we couldn't produce any right shoes or increase our production of right shoes without decreasing our production of left shoes. So that point would technically be efficient in production, but it wouldn't be allocatively efficient. It wouldn't be that wouldn't have product mix efficiency because who wants a who wants an economy where there's only left shoes? It doesn't correspond to people's preferences. The resources need to be allocated to their highest value use, right? So the highest value use it needs to correspond to, to the, the goods that are produced. It can't just be productive efficiency. We need to say, hey, the goods being produced need to actually correspond to those that people prefer, right? And people don't want only left shoes. They want pairs of shoes. They want a left shoe and a right shoe. So actually, if we were thinking about, well, how would we decide this? Actually, we'd, we'd map out the, the indifference curve. And we can get into this in another video if you don't quite follow this. But the point where the indifference curve, just assuming everybody in the economy's tastes were the, the same, the point where the indifference curve meets this, this uh, PPF is going to be the point where we'd want to produce. So it might be just something, just hypothetically, this is just, these are just hypothetical numbers. But let's say you have 35 left shoes and then you had 35 right shoes so that point that let's just say that we had this then that'd be a better example of allocative efficiency than just having an economy where we have entirely left shoes 50 left shoes and zero right shoes might be efficient in production but it's not it's not allocatively efficient because nobody wants to buy just left shoes you want to buy a pair of shoes 